happy summer to you, my friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Speaking of glad, I am so glad you have joined us here on Living by Faith with me, your host, Trillia Newbell. Summer, summer is here. Summer is winding down where I am in Tennessee. Um, we School will start back before I know it, and I, I really cannot... I can't believe it. It's here. It's gone in an instant. But summer is filled with rest, relaxation, and for some, vacations. And my family, we haven't taken a long vacation this year. We spent a long weekend away, but it's been kind of a little low key, a low key over here. And and just the other day, I started to wonder if I was doing enough to make the summer special for my teens. I kind of felt a little mom guilt, like, oh, I'm not doing enough. I'm, I'm, we need to be filled with fun or something. I don't know. As a parent, it's easy to wonder if, if you're doing enough. And I don't know where I got the idea that every day they are home, my kids are home, needs to be kind of special. But alas, <laughs> it is something I think about. I want them to have special memories and special occasions and special meals, sweet times with us every day. <laughs> every day simply is not going to be a big memory or or, or making some big uh, occasion out of it. But it is uh, this interesting desire that I have. I'm learning learning if if I try to make everything special it won't really reflect reality of life. Life it just isn't always a big event, is it? We know this. We know this is true. Most of our days are spent in the mundane. I mean, we're cooking and we're cleaning and we're scrubbing floors and we're doing just the ordinary stuff of life. And and not only is it okay, I, I think it's good. Mundane, ordinary is good and it's normal. And it, it makes me think of what Paul, um, with, as he's writing to uh, the Thessalonian church in 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12, he wrote, to seek, talking to the, the people, to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business. Like this is what the people should seek. And to work with your own hands as we commanded you so that you may um, behave properly in the presence of outsiders and not be dependent on anyone. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into the text or the meaning, but of course, you can live a quiet life and have many special and big days. That's not the point of this, but I, I, I don't think my aim should be to 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 look for the big and to look for the the loud and the 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 all of those things that's that's not really the purpose of our life right of course the real big purpose is to go and make disciples of all nations to love god with all my heart and to love my neighbor as myself but my aim should be to serve and love my kids and not to show them a good time all the time that's that's not the aim and i don't know what my idea of a perfect parent is but if i were to guess building memories that stay with them forever is part of it that's part of this ideal that i have and and again, it it's it can be a good goal, but a good goal when it becomes an idol, it becomes a bad goal. Anything that we um, begin to worship that's not God, or we begin to idolize that to make um, to to make as our trophy, it becomes a bad goal. And so I want to guard against that. My guest today knows a thing or two about the pursuit of perfection and how to guard against that. Jill Savage is an author and speaker. She is passionate about encouraging families. She is the author of nine books, including Professionalizing Motherhood, My Heart's at Home, Real Moms, Real Jesus, and No More Perfect Moms. Jill is regularly featured on Focus on the Family and Crosswalk.com. Jill, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. 
Do you, I don't know if you heard all of the things that I was just talking about, but do you relate to that at all? Like this summer perfection kind of everything needs to be special. (laughs) Yes. Why do we do that to ourselves? I mean, we just, we just about kill ourselves sometimes. Or if we don't, if we don't kill ourselves on the front end, trying to make it perfect, we kill ourselves on the back end with the guilt that we Mm. feel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so um, I think that that, you know, I mean, it's certainly uh, what I experienced um, raising my five kids. It's uh, also something that I finally got to the place where I said, something has to change. Like I cannot continue to operate this way. And as God began to change my heart and I began to uh, handle things differently. Eventually it became my no more perfect mom's book because I was like, man, I've got to have some freedom from this. Mm -hmm. And I know that I can't be the only one. Oh yeah. You are not the only one. And let's talk about that heart change and your five children. I'd love for my listeners to get to know you. So tell us a little bit about your testimony and your, your, your life, your, your people. Yeah. Well, I grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana, and um, I grew up in a a loving home, a loving family. Um, We were there every time the church doors were open. Uh, My dad was the, um, he was the choir director. So even though I wasn't a pastor's kid, I might as well have been a pastor's kid because I'm telling you, every time the church doors were open, we were there. (laughs) And um, in fact, my father, when he passed away five years ago, uh, he had served the church as a music leader for Mm. well over, I'm trying to think here. So he was 85 and he started when he was 20. So about 60 years. Mm. Um, And so I had a really strong foundation of faith. But for me, um, I would say that that was primarily religion until I was in my freshman year in college at Butler University in Indianapolis. I was getting my degree in music education. And um, a friend of mine, uh, well, a, a sorority sister, asked me if I would accompany her. And she traveled from church to church on Sunday morning and did special music. And uh, she needed an accompanist. And I said, sure, I'll do that. And um, she uh, primarily sang Amy Grant music. Now, this was the old Amy Grant music. Right. And she, um, and so I had never heard it before. I was not raised in a church environment that, uh, you know, had really any exposure to kind of contemporary Christian music. And I'm telling you, the words of those songs, Sunday morning after Sunday morning, just soaked into my soul. And I was like... I want a relationship with God like this. And so it was my freshman year in college that I moved from religion to relationship and uh, asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life and really began to have a personal relationship with him. You know, it just reminds me that God can use anything for him to use. <laughs> yeah, you know, like he is such a good, good God and that yeah. for him to use the gift that he's he has given you, but you wouldn't have completely noticed, n- recognized, right? The music gift and then you to go to this church not thinking, oh, this is where my heart's going to be transformed. <laughs> You're right. just co- accompanying a friend and for him to use the 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 ministry of music from others, their writing. It's just um, I just want to encourage anyone listening that God, he can use our gifts in so many ways to bring people to himself. And and so that's just an encouraging reminder of how the Lord uses um the gifts of the church, you know? Oh, so amazing. Okay. So you became a Christian and then all of a sudden you started writing books on motherhood. I think there's something in between there. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 no. So yeah, I, um, so then I actually met my husband that very same year, um, right before I started my freshman year in college and he was a new believer. He had come to accept Christ at a Billy Graham crusade. Oh, (laughs) 
And so, um, so anyway, we kind of really began to grow up spiritually together as we dated and then eventually got married between my, actually between my freshman and sophomore year in college. So we didn't date very long. We got married and, uh, 11 months later, the stick turned blue. (laughs) And we were like, whoa, wait a minute. We thought we were on the five-year plan here. And uh, so we had our first uh, child and, and then um, we got to my senior year and I was doing my student teaching and the stick turned blue again. And I uh, actually graduated from college on uh, my grad or I graduated from, I had my second child on my graduation day. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So I guess you were not needless walking. to say, <laughs> no, they, they, they mailed me my diploma. I yes. was, yeah, I was not walking across that stage, but anyway, so, you know, here I was a young mom, my husband decided to go into ministry. So we moved from Indianapolis to Illinois, Lincoln, Illinois. So he could go to Lincoln Bible college. Mm. And, um, so we made that move and I honestly wanted something a little different than what I had experienced growing up. And that was, I wanted my kids to know about this living relationship with Jesus from day one. And, um, and while I feel like I had known religion, I had not seen, like, I only saw my parents open their Bible when they needed to prepare a Sunday school lesson. Mm. I didn't see them open their Bible to, uh, be able to, have wisdom for their own life. And I'm not saying that they didn't do that. I just didn't see it. And um, so I was like, man, I want something different. And so I really began to dig in and want more. And eventually I started a mom's group and that mom's group uh, went from eight of us to about 250 over several years. Uh, We became, uh, ultimately that launched the Hearts at Home Ministry and the Hearts at Home Ministry uh, was in place from, uh, for about 24 years. Um, We closed our doors in 2017, Um, but we did mom conferences and those mom conferences were huge, uh, particularly in the early 2000s, um, about 6,000, 6,500 women would come. That's amazing. In all of that. God opened my heart to begin to share what he was teaching me. Well, I love that story, but also how the Lord uses things that we need to bless others. We're going to hear more from Jill Savage when we return. Welcome back to Living by Faith with Trillia Newbell. I am so glad to be here and to talk about something that we all relate to one way or another. I think that we all want to be good parents. We we do. I I for the most part. If you know Jesus, if you love the Lord, you are going to want to also be the kind of parent that God is to us. We want to to be a good parent. And sometimes we can take that desire and twist it like so much of the things that we <laughs> that we want to do. Um kind of that Paul as he's talking in uh, Romans 7 when I want to do good, ah uh, sin is right there right there crouching with me. So we have to kind of that battle that we experience. Well, Jill Savage, she is the author of No More Perfect Moms. And Jill, you were just talking about your testimony and how the Lord used um, music. And then you had babies pretty quickly after marriage and college. And you were, well, you actually, not after college, during college, you had these two mm-hmm. two beautiful children, your oldest. Um, and um, And so... I just wonder, did you experience, what was your your experience with mom, mom guilt or perfection? Because for you to write this book, I imagine, of course, you did talk about your ministry. And we're going to talk about what you're hearing about um, this topic from other moms. But, but did you personally experience any of that wrestling yourself? 
Oh my goodness. All the time. I was like my, my worst enemy. Yes. Um, I was. And it was, I think that, I mean, honestly, that's spiritual warfare. The enemy wants to whisper lies that we yeah. don't measure up. And then when we buy those hook, line and sinker, we are not our best selves. And so I struggled with that. And I believe that there's nothing wrong with us wanting to be excellent at what we do, wanting to be an excellent mom, an excellent wife, an excellent friend. But the problem is we move from, from a place of excellence into a place of perfection ever so easily. Like we don't even realize when we crossed the line. And so that was a, a big place for me of starting to go, wait a minute, I think my expectations are off. And that's part of when you can identify what I call the perfection infection in your life. When yeah. the perfection infection is in your life, you are constantly disappointed. And so you're, um, when we're talking about the perfection infection as it relates to you, you're feeling like you never measure up. You're feeling like you always uh, are less than what you want to be. Um, and you compare yourself to others. And, um, and then, you know, I eventually wrote No More Perfect Kids, which is when the perfection infection invades our parenting. And we have unrealistic expectations of our kids and mm. we unfairly compare our kids to others. Mm. And then eventually I wrote no more perfect marriages because we do the same thing in marriage. We have unrealistic expectations of our spouse and we unfairly compare our spouse to others. So, so, so real quick, real quick, what is the root of this? Because for you to write it on three different, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we have a problem. <laughs> What is it? Houston. I know. We have a problem. <laughs> so we do. So, yes. I, yes. Tell it's us comparison. That. It's okay. comparison. Okay. It really is. And, you know, I, I so I love what my friend Karen Eamon says. Um, she says, uh, you know, we've all, I mean, every generation has wanted to keep up with the Joneses. But, um, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, you only saw the Joneses at church on Sunday once a week. We see the Joneses every time we log online. Mm. We see the Joneses every time we're on Facebook or or um, Pinterest or Instagram or YouTube. I mean, we are constantly bombarded with the lives of other people. Really? And so when that happens, there's this natural thing in us that says either I'm doing better than they are or I'm doing mm. worse than they are. Right. And nine times out of 10, it's I'm doing worse than they are. Right. Mm. Um, and so that it is, it's the heart of the struggle of the perfection infection struggle. Because if I am not feeling like I measure up, if I am comparing myself to others, uh, then I uh, my eyes are on others. So my eyes are in the wrong places. And one of the things that I talk about in No More Perfect Moms is our tendency to compare our insides to other people's outsides. And when we do that, we, we come up short because we're comparing their highlight reels to our behind the scene reels. We're comparing their... Well, um, you know, like their uh, picture perfect picture of their family that some photographer took and um, edited, and then they plop that out there on Instagram or Facebook. And we then, you know, we're comparing that to our behind the scenes, really messy family life right. that we all deal with. Let's be honest, we all deal with. And so that's what begins to happen. And so one of the calls that I have in uh, No More Perfect Moms is let's start, if we're going to compare, like, I, okay, I'd really like us to not compare, but if we're going to do that, let's compare insides to insides. And we're going to realize we're not so different after all. We're yeah, not so different well, after all. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, there's a few things I'm wondering is, and the first one is, 
do you think it's worse now that social media has? Because you you mentioned that we've always, obviously, since Genesis three, we've struggled right. with. Yeah, <laughs> there's been a comparison sin issue, comparison, and and this yep. kind of sinful, envious, and that desire. Yep. But but are you suggesting that since the onslaught of social media, it is uh, getting worse, or or have you experienced that in in your t- teaching or, or um, serving women that at some point there was a shift and you saw an, an increase of this temptation? I think it's been just a slow, um, it's, it's been a slow, uh, I guess you could say fade in this direction um, mm-hmm. because um, and I, and I'm not anti-social media by any oh, means. Oh, sure. Yeah. But um, I hang out there just like everybody else does, but, um, or most everybody, there are some that choose not to, um, but I have had to change how I think about it. And so I do believe that it is um, not making it easier for sure. It's definitely making it worse uh, and for, for many of us. And so um, I think there's two ways that we can battle that. I think that the first way is that internally we can start saying to ourselves when we see someone else, when we see them and it feels like, oh, they have it better than we do, I will say to myself, she has a backstory I don't know. Hmm. And that pulls me off the ledge of comparison and plants me on the firm foundation of reality. She has pain in her life I'm not aware of. Because that is a true statement for all of us. We oh, all. Yes struggle. And then the second thing that I uh, do is uh, I really challenge women to be much more honest about their struggles. Uh, So I share very openly uh, about marriage struggles that my husband and I have been through in our 40s. Are you talking about on social media? Is that where are you saying in? Okay. 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 Yep. Or sitting across having a cup of coffee with someone. Right. Doesn't have to be on social media. It can just be talking to a friend. And instead of hiding that part of us, we share right. that part of us. Mm. Um, you know, talking about the challenges in parenting. Um, I remember I was having lunch with some friends one time and everybody's, you know, doing a catch up on their kids. And my son has just gotten suspended from school for three days. And I'm thinking, do I say anything? Do I not? Do I say anything? Do I not? And then finally I was like, no, I just have to be honest. And I, I did. I was like, well, I'm just so proud. (laughs) My son is suspended for three days and uh, because he brought a a pocket knife to school. And, um, and so now for my son, uh, you know, for, for the school, they consider that a weapon. Understandably for my son, it was a tool. Yeah, um, yeah. and, uh, you know, we had certainly warned him that that could happen. He needed to always leave his pocket knife at home, but, uh, that did not happen that day. And so, you know what I learned though, here, I thought I was going to receive judgment. And the minute I opened up those other moms went, ah. Oh, Oh, Jill. Oh, we had something like that happen one yeah. time. And yeah. then they began to, sh- you know, oh, this happened to me. And they began. What I find is honesty begets honesty. Somebody yeah. usually just has to go first. Yeah. Well, you know, I imagine that people who are listening are are wrestling and struggling with that perfect infection. And they're thinking, no, 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 I, I can't open up. If this is you and you would like to receive prayer, or maybe get some advice from Jill, give us a call. We're at 877-548-3675. That's 877-548-LIVE. You can always drop me an email at livingbyfaith at moody.edu, and I can always read um, your your prayer requests, and we we would love to pray for you. Again, it's 877-548-3675. Five. You know, Jill, I would love to talk a little bit more about this topic, and we're about to go to break, but but one of the things that I'm curious about is right now in social media land, we also, we, we're pendulum swingers, you know, and we've got mm-hmm. the messy mom or the wine mom or the... <laughs> 
<laughs> going on right now. Right. So I think, yeah. So I think that they that we've gone a little bit from the perfection to I have nothing. I've got like show it all. So so we won't get into this now, but I'd love for you to be thinking about that. Where do we go? Because we we like to pendulum. How do we protect our children? Am not sharing everything about them, and then also, so so that balance between being pretending like we've got it all together, which is sinful, yeah. and then also just laying it all out there and and not protecting the privacy of our our children or or sure. or showing all everything as in messy nothing's good uh, we're just there's no grace you know um so there's a balance there and i want us to think about it talk about it because social media is a it's an interesting it's an interesting animal that's not going to go away hey when we come back let's dig in deep more when we return Welcome back to Living by Faith with Trillia Newbell. I am talking with Jill Savage, author of No More Perfect Moms. And we have been talking about the perfect infection, which she brought, she she created that term and I love it. It's 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 it is infection. If we are trying to seek perfection or that outward perfection, um kind of through envy or, or or comparison and 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 we all know that we aren't perfect that we need the Lord he is the only perfect one um and 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 that we don't want to seek that we don't want to seek now of course we do want to seek holiness but we don't want to seek what this the world's views as perfection and so I imagine you're listening and you're thinking, ah, that is me. I need help. I need prayer. Um, maybe you you are struggling because life isn't looking the way you thought it would. Maybe, maybe your family life is not what you hoped for and you just need prayer. We would love to pray for you. Give us a call at 877-548-3675. That's 877-548-3675 or 877-548-LIVE. You may always email me at livingbyfaith at moody.edu. Now, Jill, before the break, we were talking about the, the, pursuit of perfection on social media. And then I mentioned there's a pendulum swing. <laughs> we we now see the messy mom and the the wine mom, the mom that t- could care less and it's like whatever. And and so what do you what do you um what's the balance there? What, what is the balance between I, I I think part of our problem is that we just need to live for the glory of God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe mm-hmm. I can summarize well, it there. Exactly. But yeah. 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 And that's where I uh, believe that we need to move is to stop trying to be perfect, but embrace being perfected. And yeah. so when we stop trying to be perfect, we stop striving, we stop comparing, and we start saying, Lord, where are you trying to smooth off my rough edges? Mm. Where are you trying to grow me? Where are you using my imperfections to call me to something more? And Mm. so ultimately that becomes what the heart of what we're really sharing is recognizing, for instance, I eventually in that scenario with my son where he had gotten suspended from school for three days, Um, eventually God used that to show me that I was defining myself by my children's choices. I was making an idol out of my children's behaviors. If my children made good choices, I looked good and I felt good about myself. If my children made bad choices, I didn't look good and I didn't feel good about myself. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wrong, wrong um, measuring stick there. Mm. And so I really think that's the heart of it is, you know, I followed up with that same group of ladies later on 
And I said, you know, thank you so much for letting me just be honest. And thank you for letting me know I wasn't alone. But I want you to know that God used that scenario to teach me a really important lesson. And I was making my kids' behavior the measuring stick for me as a person. Mm. And man, that's dangerous. It that's is so, so dangerous. dangerous because then yeah. we become an angry mom. Yeah. Then yeah. we become a manipulating mom. Um, and honestly, you know, I now do a lot of encouraging of empty nest moms. And it doesn't even go yeah. away after the kids grow up. I like can only the, imagine. The, yeah. Yeah. They continue to make choices that you feel like, you know, I hear empty nest moms uh, all the time say to me, I raise them differently. And uh, I think that we forget, you know, I, I do think sometimes there's this message that if you do A plus B, you will get the result of C. And yeah. with parenting, that's not the way it works. Right. If you do A plus B, you have a higher propensity to get the result of C, but right. there's no promise right. that we will. And even in Proverbs where it says, train up a child in the way that they uh, should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. Well, that's a precept. That's, that is, that's a, a precept. It's like, hey, this is, um, it's a precept. It's not a promise. And so what we have to understand is we've kind of turned that into a promise. And then when our kids, right. we don't get that C result, we're disappointed. We feel like we did something wrong. We're, um, uh, we are comparing, we're looking at others, you know, their kids aren't m making poor choices. Of course, we, we know that they are behind the scenes. We're not seeing it because all kids have a sinful nature. <laughs> we all deal with stuff. They're growing. God is working in them. God is molding them. And so I really think that that's the key is that we have to move from trying to be perfect to embrace being perfected and letting God mm. work in us and sharing that more often. Amen. You know, you had mentioned that we want to compare the um, inside to Our the inside. Insides. Instead of that, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And one of the things that I, I think about how Paul, um, and I, I can't think of the scripture right now, but he says, follow me as I follow Christ. And, mm -hmm. and so I've always thought that we've got comparison just backwards, that there is mm -hmm. a good type of comparison to look to uh, even uh, Titus 2, where yeah. we see this kind of teaching, right? Going back and forth, all yeah. of these different. And so there is something about, okay, I'm going to look at the Christ in you and I'm going to, I want to follow that. I want to look at that and learn yes. from you. And, and so yes. I'd love to speak on how you've encouraged women to do that. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's what, that's the kind of stuff we need to be sharing on social media or that we need to be sharing, sitting across the table, having a cup of coffee with somebody is how God has grown us, uh, what he's taught us, how, um, how, you know, because then we're always, we can always be that Titus two woman for someone, because right. even if we feel like we're kind of at the, you know, we're just starting this journey. Hey, there's somebody behind us in some area of life. Um, and so, uh, I think that, you know, first we have to recognize we have something to offer someone else because mm -hmm. we have learned lessons. And so um, we have so much to offer. Um, at the same time, we have so much to learn. Right. And so, yes, it is. You know, I watched you, you know, it's maybe saying to someone, I watched you walk through that really yes. difficult journey. And I want, if I ever deal with a really difficult journey like that, I want to walk through it like you walked through it. You walked through it with such grace. You walked through it with such courage. Can you, can you help me to understand what that was like for you from the inside out? That is going, that's the kind of comparison that is helpful. Yeah. You know, in so many ways, many of the books that we um, publish at Moody Publishers, I'll just speak specifically for publishers, is that 
it has that goal. It's it's not people who yeah. have arrived, but people who've nope. walked through it. Yep. Nope. And they exactly yeah, they need help, and they're now helping. They're comforting others with the comfort that they received from Christ, or they're exactly. teaching what they learned. And so, I yeah, it it makes sense that this is a part of discipleship, and it's to teach God to obey all that He commanded. Well. We, we experience that, and then we get to encourage and, and shepherd and, and minister to our, our neighbor. And, and I just want to encourage the listeners that you can do that, too. You don't yeah. have to. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes we think we have to have all the answers or, no. or a degree. <laughs> no, right. no, we can be, like you, Jill, a mom who needed yep. other moms. Yep. And then the Lord built something out of it. Now, the Lord won't mes- necessarily build ministries out of all of our lives, but, right. but faith, faithfulness, and you were faithful. So we can all be faithful. And I hope that people are encouraged by that. And we will have more of this when we return. Welcome back to Living by Faith with Trillia Newbell. This has been a really encouraging and I hope freeing show for you. It's been freeing for me to know that I can rely on the Lord and that when I am thinking about my kids, my life, my family, I can think, okay, I need Jesus we all need Jesus, and I don't have to look to the left or to the right. I can look straight ahead to the Lord, and that's where we need to look as we're running our race. However, if we do look to the left or to the right, we need to look for the Jesus in others and not try to compare. Um, one of the things that I've tried to do, Jill, is incur- try to try to twist that a little and to turn. Anytime I'm looking to someone, I'm thinking, ah, oh, I, I wish I had that is to try to think, oh, God, thank you for giving that person that, to try to turn yeah. it to encouragement or, or so I want to just talk about some of the, yeah, what, is, what are some of the, yes, gratefulness. What are some of the, the things that you have either done in your own life or encouraged other women to do to either fight comparison or to, well, yeah, that's, re- that's really it, to fight this yeah. fight so that we can encourage, be encouraged. Yeah. Well, one of the things I talk about is the antidotes to the perfection infection in the No More Perfect Moms book. And the antidotes to the perfection infection are what I call the God tools. And the God tools are uh, different things that we can use uh, to keep that perfection infection out of our heart. So one of the God tools is courage. And I can have courage to be honest about the the hard stuff of life, just like I did, you know, sitting there with those three moms and honestly sharing about what was real in my motherhood at that moment. Um, an, another is uh, forgiveness. Sometimes mm. I have to, I have to forgive to not build resentment in my heart, especially when someone in my life um, maybe disappoints me. Um, maybe it's me I have to forgive, right? Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves. Um, I One of the things I've learned is um, sometimes we have to give ourselves what I call the grace of growth. The grace you know, of growth. I yeah, like we that. are the hardest. So I talk about that in my Empty Nest Full Life book, which is a moody book, by the way. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> and, um, but because a lot of Empty Nest moms, they beat themselves up. For what they didn't do. They look mm. back and go, oh, I wish I would have. Oh, why didn't I? Oh. And I'm like, you know what? You did the best you could with the knowledge you had at that time. You now have new knowledge. And sure, if you could do it over again, you'd probably do it differently only because you have different knowledge. So give yourself the grace of growth and um, recognize that you've grown you now see it differently and uh, let yourself off that hook. And I think even moms that are actively mothering, you know, that will beat ourselves up for, um, you know, something that we did last week or last month Mm or, um, and it's like, again, look in that moment, you know, probably since then you have 
learned more about yourself. Maybe you've run across some scripture that speaks to it. Maybe you've talked to another mom and you've got perspective. You now have the grace. You need, you now have growth and you need to give yourself the grace um, because uh, that grace of growth, uh, because you're in a different place than you were a month ago. And we forget that. See, we, we learn new information and then we beat ourselves up with that new information. It's like, no, that's, it's a part of the journey. Um, and so we, what we want to do is we want to use our God tools that will help us to stop that perfection infection in our life and that we will begin to stop being, trying to be perfect and embrace being perfected. Yes. Amen to, to that. And, and so I, I do have a question about a specific situation. So if, if people are part of, part of the, the mom guilt or the, is that their family life maybe didn't look like they wanted mm-hmm. it or didn't look perfect. And yeah. you had, and, and so, so you were very honest and vulnerable in no, not, uh, not so perfect, no more perfect moms. <laughs> And, and I just wonder what, what is the, the, how can you encourage and, and, and help people talk through, um, when their life doesn't look, look like what we, we, the ideal or whatever we're idolizing and, and how, how they can, um, really encourage their kids, especially as adults, because I think that can be kind of a battle for, for people who are about to be empty nesters or looking back. What, how can you encourage people? Yeah. Um, I think most of our lives don't look the way we thought they would. Yeah. Whether that is with career or whether that is with parenting or whether that is with marriage and, um, and so one of the things that, uh, that, that comes down to expectations. And, um, I once heard somebody say expectations are preconceived resentments. Oh. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> we filled that'll... with phrases. That is really good. Expectations that'll are like <laughs> really mess with you when you think about that. Yeah. Um, and so, um, but it's true to some degree. And of course, when you get married, you expect that that marriage is going to last, right? Um, yeah. But uh, marriage takes two people. And so sometimes maybe the other person uh, brings their own struggles. Well, not maybe, they do bring their own struggles. And uh, for some reason, that doesn't last. Um, maybe, you know, in your in your mind, you imagined that you were going to get a, a daughter that wa- is going to love ballet as much as you did, but you instead got a daughter who um, likes to write code for, um, you know, video games or something like that. So we are constantly dealing with, um, we're constantly dealing with our own expectations and our own disappointments. And one of the God tools that I talk about in No More Perfect Moms is acceptance. Mm. And the God tool of acceptance is what allows us to embrace reality and, um, and to accept, um, and to accept our, our child's struggle, uh, to accept our, um, the reality of what's happening in our marriage or our spouse's struggle. Um, that doesn't mean, and this is what's really important. Accepting doesn't mean agreeing with, let's say, you know, especially as children grow up and they leave the home and, um, and your child is maybe living a lifestyle that you don't agree with. Um, we can accept that we can love them and not agree with them. And, um, And that is an important part of the journey, because when we can get to a place of acceptance, um, then what we're able to do is we're we're able to begin to um, reduce the discontentment in our life that comes with expectations. Mm, That is so, so good, Jill. Um, Just... For listeners, I'm talking to Jill Savage. And as we end today, I'd love for you to just give the listener some gospel hope. Maybe she's a new mom. How can you encourage her heart? Mm. 
Well, what I want her to know is Jesus sees you. He mm. loves you. Um, he lived on this earth and there's so many things that he uh, experienced um, uh, as, you know, that moms experience. And so I, I just want more than anything. Um, I'm sure that there's someone listening that's thinking nobody sees me. And I want you to know, we see you, uh, Jesus sees you and, um, he's, he's got his hand held out and he's saying, just grab it. We're going to walk mm. this together. Um, because even his world, uh, even though it was, you know, what needed to happen, uh, we see in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, him asking God, isn't there another way? Uh, and then he gets to a place of acceptance. He gets to a place of surrender. Not my will, but yours be done. Mm-hmm. And the more we grab hold of the hand of Jesus, who understands us, um, then that's where our eyes need to be. And we mm. can walk out whatever life looks like. Amen. Jesus was tempted in every way, but without sin. He relates yeah. to our sorrows, to our pain, to our struggle, and he invites us. He invites you to a throne of grace in your time of need. And well, we need him every single day, every yeah. single hour. And he He. He welcomes us. So, he Jill, sure thank does. you so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. I, yes, it's such a joy. Thank you, Jill Savage, for joining me today. And also thanks to the behind the scenes team at Moody Radio, my producer, Karen Hendren, and Chris Seagard for engineering today and Tierra on the phone lines. To grow daily in your faith, you can tune into my 52 Weeks in the Word podcast. You can find it at moodyradio.org. To hear today's program again, you'll find it at livingbyfaithradio.org or on the Moody Radio app. You may also connect with us through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Trillia Newbell. Living by Faith is a production of Moody Radio, a ministry of Moody Bible Institute. 